to the urban heat of food, and this will increase in the carbon in all of the third world, the climate change and increase consumer demand. And currently, food production is all dependent on fossil fuel. Pink oil needs to be food. Energy solutions are needed to solve this perplexing problem. So, what does this mean for Singapore? We need to look at how wide urban farming in HDB estates is a good factor for Singapore. Singapore is a land sacred country, and there's only a uh, little land we can reserve for traditional agriculture. We are currently not reaching food production targets. For example, for example our target is 10% of living vegetables to be produced locally, but current is only 7%. Urban farming allows us to be more food resilient in case of turbulent food supply and cost. And urban farming does not require as much space as people might think. There are many possible approaches you can take in urban farming in our HDB estates. One is whether you want to grow soilless or soil, outdoors or indoors, rooftop gardening or vertical gardening. So, how they can they work for Singapore? To do that, we need to look at some case study and how it is practiced in other countries. The first case study is New York. Now, in New York City, there are many low income residents. They have limited access to fresh produce, but there is a lot of arable land. And they suffer from all sorts of diseases such as obesity and diabetes. Now, in New York, they use empty lots to start community or urban gardens. The land, the training and financial encouragement is provided by the city and non-profit groups. So most of these people who run these urban gardens are volunteers who go there after work. There are also rooftop gardens, for example, there is one owned by a uh, owners in a Manhattan restaurant. So we can see this picture, this is their rooftop garden. And there are also many opportunities for people who decide to embark on urban farming in New York to sell their produce so they can earn some extra income. The second case study will be in Tokyo. Now in Tokyo, there is, you can see here, there is underground plot beneath an office building. Now the space used to be a bank wall that used to sell money, 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 money. And it's maintained using complete control measurement of light and temperature. So there will be intelligent AI, actually intelligence maintaining the light and temperature. Now, this underground plot is set up by a personal company for agriculture training. And the plot is maintained by two groups of people, middle-aged people looking for career switch to be to go into the agriculture or horticulture industry, and for young people who just graduated out of uni and cannot find a job so that so they can gain experience. The personnel companies in Tokyo also run rooftop gardens for a similar purpose. Now, we need to assess our choices while we a new latest choice with the farming, but it will be more likely to attract them for our future, and it's still too expensive even with the latest technology, such as those vertical farming columns, which they recently announced in today. These vertical farming columns cost $10,000 each not including maintenance, so it will be way expensive to maintain. Now, what approach might be work was a concrete plot approach. And as you all know, space is a problem in Singapore. It can be solved by getting creative with any land where we toss underground. The government needs to set up a legal framework and then use money to apply to gardening. And manpower, such as volunteers, young people who can carry agriculture, build a rich horticulture experience, for carrot stretch, and low income, then low income people, they need extra income. The benefit of this is that we can meet our food production targets, we can be more food specific, we can source low income, and we can cut our carbon emissions, and to potentially train future people to go to the agriculture industry, a carrot choice for the young people and the middle-aged people who desire a carrot switch. So, I'd like to thank Asset for a good time for guiding me and leading away for not so good ideas such as putting vertical farming columns on the rooftop. Thank you for listening. Okay, any questions for Silway?
Kristen. The two examples they've cited are actually from uh, temperate countries, uh, Japan and New York, uh, two temperate cities. So what, ch what kind of differences we expect from a, um, Japan and New York versus Singapore is actually tropical in terms well, of vertical farming? We will farming. probably definitely go to cut the crops. On the crops, even you can control temperature and light will not grow well in outdoor spaces. Like, unless you can put them indoors like the underground walks that I talked about in Japan. Uh, how, how receptive do you think uh, town councils or the HDB would be to growing food plants in HDB estate? Your feeling? I thought they were, uh, they are a child sent email to the town council. I think they'll be enthusiastic as it also, besides giving people sort of food, it's a good way for people as a community, they can share in the maintenance of the food garden and then they can some community bonding so it's a way for the community they can make small talk so that uh, it's a very good chance for the community even the community to interact together and then cooperate to seek a common goal so it's those in new york and japan where there's uh, community involved and there's frequent uh, interactions like do you see reports on this county kind of for the new york and the japan case well, the example in New York is mostly individual food plots, mostly. Okay. But because in Singapore, there's not enough space for everyone to have their own food plot, that's why they need to be in it shared by the community. So do you expect uh, maybe residents, instead of uh, improving social relationships, instead there is acrimony and people fighting over the harvest instead of uh, well, that's what the community mediator is for. So, so who will play the role of community mediator? Uh, you know that it's like some, I thought there was some council or body that meditates the communities. Like usually, you know, the neighbor might have this agreement, so they can refer it to the mediators instead to going in court. So I, I think it will be the same person. But I don't think people will be partners and they won't argue about little issues like that. No, uh, many RCs in Singapore, they have their own... Uh, no, so uh, there will be allocated a little piece of land they can do some simple farming there, like see in Zhenghua, see in Clementi, so uh, two RCs. So, uh, just curious, how is this uh, farming that already on land are going to be very different from the vertical farming since they are all, both are actually community based. And are you expecting that the vertical farming will be able to produce more crops? Well, uh, vertical farming is more efficient than the usual space, so you can get produce more crops and harvest in a smaller area. For example, this can work for a very small or can this, you can give a size space a small bed so they can put all the vertical farming columns there and then put some artificial sunlight, like they do it indoors, like the one in Japan should be. So roughly how big would a vertical farming uh, such column be like? What, what dimension? Like, roughly? The entire place or the vertical column? Huh? The entire, the entire area yeah. or the size of vertical column? And the area first. How, how, what's area likely to, to be needed for one vertical Farming, I mean, columns to be economical. One hundred square meters or a few hundred square meters. Oh, what example 
those are some food crops that you can grow on. Probably, if you grow it only with your farming, you probably need some, can only grow into vegetables like spinach, kang kong, and things like that. But in the community, we can grow almost any crops that can grow here, so like some herbs, some little vegetables, some fruit crops, some fruit trees, and some herbs and spices. Thank you. <coughs> Last question? Any more questions? Which part of the community do you think would be interested in um, under, uh, to take this, up, to take this <coughs> job up as in Japan? Or would it be the town council that assigns people to do it? I think both approaches can work. Perhaps if there's an avenue so that they can sell the something way to sell the sell these crops out, the crops they do not need the excess crops, they can sell it. And so this would be an also income for those low income people, like so those retiree old folks that live in a one room flat with almost no income, they can benefit from this enterprise. If there are no more questions, we'll go to the next speaker. Thank you. Thank you.